And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight, well, we're going to try a different wine from a different country. I don't know the last time I've ever tried one for this from this particular co uh, country, so we're going to give it a try tonight. Uh, we'll find out if it's any good. I've heard some pretty good things about it, so we'll give it a try, see if we like it. We'll pair it with some foods. And also tonight, I'm going to make a little cocktail here for you. Uh, we're going to do it in honor of a national day. And we have a few national days to toast, so we'll be toasting those as well. Plus, we'll be doing the usual stuff. Uh, dad jokes and maybe a giveaway or two if we can get folks in the chat to to put in their best or worst dad jokes and uh, now yeah, we'll see what comes out of that anyway welcome 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 to the Saturday Night Wine Stream I'm Rick and this is a show about somewhat about wine it's a show a little bit like wine's just a catalyst to get things going uh, the show's a little bit about uh, the pairing and about the fun and that sort of thing, but really what the show is about, it's about you and me getting together on a Saturday night, kicking back, relaxing from the worries of the week with our favorite libations, our favorite drinks, whatever they are, uh, favorite foods, whatever they are, and just, just having a good time, just getting in the chats. That's what this show is all about. It's about bringing people together. Now, you can chat with me live. We are on four different platforms. Streaming live. You can reach, let me show you where you can reach us, or uh, let's, let's go over that. Uh, let me find that, oh, here it is. Is it there? Yes, there it is. You can reach me live on our Facebook page. The, pace, the Facebook page is uh, Facebook at Drink with Rick. And we're also live on our YouTube channel. It's at Drink with Rick. Twitch is twitch.tv slash drink with Rick and the number one, all one word. And on Odyssey, Odyssey is at Drink with Rick and the colon and the number seven. Now that's where you can reach me. And also, if you can't watch now or can't watch later, uh, you can uh, go to the podcast. Uh, podcast goes out every. Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. 10 p.m. Eastern on Mondays is how you can subscribe to the podcast. You can subscribe via Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, PodcastIndex.org, or by email if you go to drinkwithrick.com, click on the subscribe page, uh, click on the little blue button. Uh, by email button, put your email address in the box, and you will get the latest episode of Drink with Rick, the podcast, the audio podcast, as soon as it comes out, and no salesman will call. It's just for getting the podcast. Now, you can um, watch live also on our website, drinkwithrick.com. Uh, we don't have a live chat going there, but if you if you go to the page for tonight's episode, click on that page and open it up. You'll get a comment box. You can type in your comments. I will respond in kind. It won't be right away. It'll be whenever I can get it. But you can also email me with uh, any of your suggestions, comments, good, bad, and different, whatever. Rick at SavoyaMedia.com. Rick at SavoyaMedia.com is where you can, can go uh, to contact me directly. Also on the, the, the comment box at uh, drinkwithrick.com on, on the blog or uh, anywhere on the website pretty much where you can find the comment box, you can contact me there as well. That's fine. 
Oh, yeah, you can uh, like and subscribe and all that other good stuff you want. If you're watching on any of these venues, please, you know, you can hit the like button and the you know, subscribe button and ding the bell and all that kind of stuff. It's good. I, I don't require that. And it's if you want to, that's great. You can even buy me a coffee that, to help support the show if you want. That's fine. I, it's not something, I mean, you can do it if you want, and it's it's great. I would really, really appreciate it, but it's not something that... Um, that is a, the priority for me. The priority for me here is to be here with you. And, the two, and, and, you know, both of us, we're here together. And we're here with everyone else in the chat and just having a good time. That's what the priority is. That's what the show is really about. So even if you're just watching passively and, uh, you know, just, just flipping the channels on the TV or whatever, uh, wherever you're watching on YouTube, stick around and we'll have some fun. We'll have some fun. Okay, so I think I gave you the itinerary for tonight, pretty much, but I'm glad to show you the wine that we're gonna be drinking tonight. I do have my show notes actually right here. I do have them right, I didn't show the show notes, did I? Well, they're right here, I do have them. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show, by the way. So when you get in the, the you know, you get in the chats, you pretty much direct the show here we're getting in the chats and talking with me so I do have the show notes I went through the itinerary but we go off the beaten path quite a bit because you make this show we make this show what it is stream of consciousness that's what we're going for here more or less now there are a couple of ground rules we don't talk about politics we don't talk about religion on the show we talk about things that bring people together as wine does and that that's that's the goal here. <laughs> That's the goal here, bringing everyone together, making new friends, meeting old friends, and just having a great time. All right, so I'm going to show you the wine in just a moment. Before I do that, let's get into the chats and see who's in the chats. We've got, uh, let's see, let me, let me say uh, good evening to everyone in the chats there on Facebook and on YouTube. We're on YouTube. My lovely wife, Chi, is in the chat on YouTube, and she says hello and right back at, uh, right back at you. Thank you for being here. And uh, let's see, Twitch, let's see. Every, we're, we're good. We're live everywhere. It looks like we're good to go all over the place and on the website. We're live on the website, so everything is okay. All right, well, let me show you what we have to drink tonight. Tonight, this is what we're drinking. This is a wine from Portugal. It's called Vena de, Pom uh, de Fonte, excuse me, Vena de Fonte. Uh, this is a reserve wine. And by the way, I have, <laughs> I have it right here. It's supposed to be chilled so i have it right here in the official drink with rick ice bucket being chilled uh while we're while it's uh, waiting to be opened let me go ahead and take it out of the uh, ice bucket now as a matter of fact we've got a little ice in the bottom here all right there we go and what's this okay that's that's uh, another bottle of of something else that's we're that's what we're going to be putting together later on tonight uh to celebrate the national day so we'll we'll get to that later. Stick around, and you'll find out what it is. <laughs> if you haven't guessed already. Alright, so this thing's chilled down. It is it is fairly well chilled. Let's go back to the wine again. Alright, this is the front of the bottle. Venha da Fonte Reserva. And uh it's a uh it's a product of Portugal. It's a twenty twenty one Casa Armelinda Freitas. Uh, that was established 1920. So this this winery has been around since 1920. Let me show you the back of this wine. I'm going to read this. It's going to take a minute or two to read. Vena da Fonte, uh, Vinho Regional Peninsula de Setubal. I do not speak Portuguese. Okay. Uh, Reserva. This is uh, now the bottom down here. It's in English, so I'll read that. It says a family-run company. Casa Ermelinda Freitas was founded in 1920 in Fernando, in Fernando Po, southern Portugal. The quality of the wines are recognized globally, validated by the hundreds of international awards they have earned. This intense and elegant wine, elaborated with 25% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% uh, Castileo, 20% Syrah, 20% Turiga Nacional, and 10% Alicante Boucher. The wine was aged in French and American oak casks 
for the period of 12 months with the intention of, added, of adding complexity. The bouquet has fine aromatic notes of black fruits and sweet spices for the oak aging. The palate is rich and smooth, perfect. That's all in caps there, perfect to accompany complex dishes, red meat, and cheeses. Drink between 61 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Store for a recommended maximum of 10 years. So you can store this for up to 10 years. How about that? I did not know that um, before uh, when I bought this bottle. Uh, okay, there is 14.5% uh, ABV in the 750 milliliter bottle of wine. It's imported by Ascram, Miami, Florida. Now, the person who wrote this is signed it down the bottom. If you can see the signature down the bottom, those who can see the the image there, it's uh, Leonor Freitas. Freitas, he's the proprietor or proprietus, proprietress. It says proprietor slash proprietus. Okay. Um, well, all right. Um, it was a little bit hard. Some of that was a little bit hard to read. It's just so small, but I was trying to read this. Anyway, so we have the wine here. A wine from Portugal. How about that? Uh, we're going to have to try it out. Looking forward to it. All right, so to try it out, let me get my wine uh, equipment here, my wine decorking equipment, which, by the way, where's my decorker down here? Ah, oh, it's down here. Oh, yeah, it's way down here. <laughs> there it is. It's in the box there. Thanks for watching that for me, Bill. You know, Roadkill Bill, he's... Uh, <laughs> he's... Uh, waiting in the in the box down there for later roadkill bill is the official mascot of drink with rick on the saturday night wine stream all right we've got this out of the way let me go ahead and uncork or as i like to say decork the wine and we'll get that there we go and hopefully this comes up oh there you go came out rather easily and we'll take the cork out later here, Bill, hold this for me. Thank you. All right, so we've got the wine decorked, uncorked, decorked. Once again, uh, this is what it looks like, the front of the bottle. And uh, Vinha del Fonte, or Da Fonte, that's what it is. Vinha da Fonte. So that's what we got. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the aerator in there, and hopefully there's not much displacement there okay looks like we're good all right it's in there and then of course to hold the grape nectar I have my genuine Galway Irish crystal glass given to me by my employers at buy2wayradios.com ready to go and of course to hold the glass I have my official the official drink with Rick coasters and uh you can go to the website drinkwithrick.com, find out how you can get a free pair of these. Okay. All right, I'm going to pour a little bit into the glass. It is cold, and, and I did chill it down as it said to do so. So we're going to pour a little bit in the glass. Set that aside, set the bottle aside here. There we go. And we'll give it a nice little swirl here. Nice, healthy swirl. Get this going. There we are. Okay. And we'll just set it aside for just a moment to breathe. Just breathe a little bit. Get that wine oxygenated, as I like to say. And while it's doing that, let's learn a little bit more about this wine. Before I do that, let me check the chats here just one more time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check the chats, see how it's going in there. Okay, nice and quiet. All right. <laughs> nice and quiet. Hey, get in the chats and say hi. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking or what you like to be drinking or what you'd like to see me drinking. And if I can afford a bottle of it, I'll see if I can find it, uh, buy it, and drink it too. Try it out. Give it a fair and an honest review. Okay, so let's find out a little bit more about this wine. I checked around online. I know where, uh, you know, I, I purchased this at uh, Trader Joe's, so it was a little while back. Um, I, I was in there this past week, and I think I still saw some bottles of it in there. So they have it. I checked around on Wine Searcher, and uh, most of the pricing was uh, for 
uh, overseas for in Europe, and uh, they've got it listed. Uh, well, let's see. A wine and fine cost Christian fine ski. I guess that's in Germany. Uh, that's five dollars forty-two cents, and it looks like that's in, in uh, U.S. dollars. But there's nineteen, wow, nineteen percent sales tax on that. That is included in the price, though. Winehouse Peter Wolf, Winehouse. That's six dollars and two cents. That's also in Germany. Um, some of these are in Germany. Let me see if I can find anywhere. Ah, perfect uh, wine uh, in in never in the Netherlands. Six dollars fifty-one cents. That includes 21% sales tax. Oh my goodness, that's uh, pretty high. Brander Wines in the Netherlands, 21% sales tax. Uh, oh yeah, the, the price, $6.51 in, in US dollars. Um, yeah, I don't see anything here. Uh, Denmark, Philips and Wine in Denmark, $10.27. Includes 25% sales tax. Oh my goodness, wow. Uh, 25% sales tax. Uh, Brazil, Casa Rio Verde in Brazil, $30.83 for a 750 milliliter bottle of this wine from Portugal. We include 17% sales tax. Um, wow, uh, I don't see anything here from the Americas. Let's see what uh, Vivino has. Vivino gives it an uh, an average of all user reported prices of $8.99 and they give it a 3.9 star rating out of five stars and this is from 100 ratings and I think that's across all of the vintages I believe um, but I'll tell you what I paid for this wine because I've got, uh, is this the right one here? Uh, no, this is the, uh, this is a different one this is it, this is my receipt from Trader Joe's there it is, right there. The receipt for the Vinha de Fonte Reserva. Uh, it is uh, $8.99. I paid $8.99, so I basically paid the going rate what was listed on Vivino. So I guess that's where, what it's going for here in the States. All right. I guess it's just about time for tasting. Let me double check on Twitch and see what's going on there. Anything happening there? It, you know, it's interesting. I'm, I've got... Um, I, and this has been happening the last few years, a uh, few years, a few weeks. I haven't had any wine yet. This has been happening the last few weeks, and I have, um, for some reason, uh, the Twitch um, manager here is not posting the number of viewers, or wasn't posting the number of viewers. That was pretty interesting. But I, I have people watching, but it just it wasn't posting them in my. Uh, and my manager, my stream manager. Interesting. Okay, um, now it's doing it. It wasn't doing it before. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go ahead and give this wine a little bit of a whiff and then a little bit of a taste. Let's see what we got here. Mm. Smells like cherry. Cherry and uh, hmm. it smells a little bit like blackberry. Let's give it a taste. Oh wow, it's um, a little on the jammy side. It's some like some black cherry. And uh, some blackberry, uh, some blackberry in there, kind of what I'm uh, tasting. It is a little bit on the oaky side, um, not much, a little bit. It's a kind of medium bold. It looks like a bold, you know, coming out of here, this wine looks really bold. Pour a little bit more of this. This is a very deep ruby, almost a, almost a purple color, very deep color. This is a um very uh well it's it's fairly bold it's not the boldest wine I've, I've had but it's it's fairly bold there are some tannins in this wine not overly tannic uh, considering the fact this wine's so bold uh you know looks bold anyway
there's um, some tannins, but it, it is a little on the a little on the jammy side, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of fruit in this wine. I want to say it's just a little bit chewy, but um, but it's not really the tannins that are chewy. It's it's more like the more like the the, the fruit. It's it's yeah it's kind of a packed um, it's, it's it's packed with fruit. Uh, I can't read this from here anymore. <laughs> it's the 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 font the the fonte <laughs> the fonte is so small. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's a little oaky and um, mostly I'm getting blackberry and cherry on this. And some oak. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it, the the wine being uh, having to be uh, th this red one having to be chilled to uh, to where it is right now. Um, I'm, I kind of want to see this wine open up a little bit. I think it needs to open up a little bit more because I, I think it's a little bit it needs to be aerated a little more. I need, I think this wine needs to probably be decanted uh, somewhat. I did not decant it. It really does need to be decanted. I think. Because everything's a little bit, it just feels like all the flavors are kind of tightly packed in there. They kind of have to be unpacked a little bit. So we'll give it a little bit of time to to unpack itself. Mm. And in the meantime, let's take a look and see what my lovely wife has for us to pair with this wine. We'll see what that's all about. So I've got camera three up. I'm excited to show this to you. Camera three, It's we're keeping it simple tonight. Keeping it simple. We have some spaghetti and uh, meat sauce over there, which uh, should go good with this wine. I, when I was checking on this wine before, I was thinking, yeah, yeah this might be a good wine for some uh, uh, pastas. I think this is really a good wine for red meat because of its um, the fact that it's somewhat bold and we've, we've got the tannins in here. And the tannins, are, they're kind of medium tannins right now. Um, but because it's so packed with fruit, I'm wondering if maybe this should be like really with a with a charcoal grilled steak or something. Anyway, the the, um, the pasta's there. You see the pasta. And we have a couple of cheeses there. The cheeses that we have tonight are the unexpected cheddar with parm and one called Grana Pasano or Pagano, I think is what it was. No, Padano, excuse me. Grana Padano is that cheese. Um, and it's it's kind of like a parm. It, it's very much like a parm or maybe a cross between a parm and, and, and a Romano kind of cheese. We've had it on the show before. And I got that cheese for, for free. <laughs> Somebody asked me later, I'll, I'll, uh, there's a story behind that. Not a very interesting one, but there is one. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we've got going on there. And what's that at the top? Oh, we have some fruits there. Now, we have some fruits there, and I'm going to explain what that's all about in just a little bit. And Ed's in the chat. Ed's in the chat. It's great to see you. My good friend Ed is here. Ed says, found you. I'm, gl I'm glad you did. Um, I didn't know I was lost, but I'm glad to see you. Ed says, been a while. Thanks for the toasting a week ago today. Yes, um, Ed's birthday was last uh, last week, and um, we did toast Ed uh, during the stream. And you know what else we did, Ed? You, you missed a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to give Ed a nice big shout out. Give him a round of applause here. Thank you for being here with us tonight, Ed. Stick around because we're going to have some fun, and um, I, you know, we tried a coffee. Was it a coffee that we tried last last week? I've been having your the coffees and showing off the mug that you gave me. It's always time for um, friends wine and coffee. It's uh, I, that's the one. That's the official drink. I'll tell you that is the official drink with Rick coffee mug now. And we run it every night. We do it every or every weekend. We do it in the official Drink with Rick coffee maker, which I, I don't have plugged in tonight because we're not doing a coffee tonight. But we are doing something else. We are doing a uh, 
Uh, hey, well, I don't want to give it away, do I? <laughs> because we have a national day that's related to it. Stick around for a few minutes, and then we will do this uh, this national day with this other this other beverage. That this other beverage is one that everyone can partake of. Although the version I'm going to uh, put together, mixed together with this beverage, is going to be one that maybe you should be uh, 18 or 21 or older to drink. <laughs> Okay, I'm giving away too much, but it, Ed, it is great to see you, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Okay, so let me let me see what we've got on the on the uh, other streams for a moment. Uh, Twitch, okay, we're good everywhere else. Now, I was going to say that we're about to to uh, not to excuse me, we're about to try the pasta because it's getting very cold now because it's been sitting out in the element so let's go back to camera three i'm going to try a little bit of this pasta here just a little bit and we're going to try it with the if i can get it on the fork yeah yes it is an italian i'm supposed to be able to roll it on the fork uh, it's just that i'm in a very interesting position here trying to get to it get to the plate so it's uh, not easy to do Let's give it a try. Mm. Mm. Very, very good pasta, by the way. Spaghetti made by my wife, G. Of course, it's, it's leftovers. It's always leftovers. <laughs> we don't, we don't have the budget yet to uh, make a meal just for this show. Oh yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, I like it with the pasta. It goes well with the spaghetti with the meat sauce. I like that. Very good. Uh, and it's it's actually pretty good. I think being a red wine, it's not we'll see once again, let's look at the back here. Because it says here is the combination, uh, so I'm not surprised it would go well with the pasta. 25% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Castel, uh, Castileo, 20% Syrah, 20% Touriga National, and 10% Alicante Boucher. I think that with that combination, very very interesting. It's a very unique blend. Uh, I think that uh, I think it actually would, would go well with pastas and red meats. That's why I mentioned red meats before. Let me go ahead and clear the palate. Now we have light fare tonight because uh, I want to get more to the festivities here and spend less time on the, the eating per se. All right, so we're going to try this right now. This first item right here is the Unexpected Cheddar with Parm, and we've had that on the show numerous times. It went uh, well with the Chianti, uh, I think, uh, two weeks ago, and it's it's gone pretty well with most of these foods. I think it will go okay with this. Just a guess. It's a good cheese, by the way. And I need to pour a little bit more of this wine. Mm. Ed, how'd your week go, by the way? Hope it was a good one. Cool. Yeah, wow, now it adds a little bit of sweetness and it adds an interesting flavor, a, a, a different flavor to it. Kind of a, um, almost adds a, a kind of a meaty flavor to the cheese. I like as if, as if I was mixing a cheese with uh, say uh, a meat or something, but it's, it's not quite there, but it, it's almost a, a little hint of that. But the cheese went really well with this wine. Okay, I, I liked it so far. Now, I did say that it had some pretty decent ratings, and I I just glanced at a few of the reviews uh, that I saw online for it. People uh, were pretty much liking this wine a lot. I'm kind of surprised. I wasn't I wasn't sure what to expect out of it, but it's actually pretty good. Now, I will say so far that. It's probably not going to be my first choice for a wine uh, if I was having an, an Italian dish. 
But I think if I was having a steak, this would be really, really good with that. Mm. Yeah, I think this go really well with certain, certain steaks. Now we're going to clear the palate one more time. And we're going to try it with a different cheese. We're going to try it, well, it's actually not that different really when you think about it. We're going to try it with this, this other cheese here, which is the, uh, it's called a Grava Padano. Grana Padano, excuse me. Grana Padano. And it's a very hard cheese. Very dry, hard. And it's pretty much like a Parmesan. Okay, now this one, this one I'm not 100% sure about. This one um, has a little bit of a, I don't want to say bitter, but uh, almost a um, slightly sour taste to it. I can't say that I like that one as much as I, I do with the, the first cheese that we tried. It has a slightly sour taste to it that's kind of, some people might really like it. Not so much for me. But it's it's not bad. It's just you know slightly sour at the end. Uh, but overall, I think I really liked it with the with the uh, other the uh, cheddar with parm. That was pretty good. Okay, I think that does it for the tasting for for now. Let's go back to the chats for just a minute because I want to get to uh, <laughs> I want to get to mixing up this other drink. This that could be a lot of fun. So. Uh, and, and Ed, how was your birthday, by the way? I hope you had a really, really good birthday. hope you had a great birthday. And uh, everyone watching on Twitch, jump in the chat and say hi on Twitch. We're also live on Odyssey, and we're live on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, by the way, um, I had there was someone in YouTube last week that I wanted to, I, I wanted to give away uh, the official Drink with Rick Wine Tasting Notebook to. And uh, if that person would come back to leave me their their uh, valid shipping address so that I can send that out to them, it would be much appreciated. As for everyone else, I've got your prizes here from uh, from a couple of weeks ago. Those should be on their way to you, so you should be receiving those very very soon if you haven't already. But they, they should be on their way to you now. It took me a couple of weeks to get them out there. Uh, there were delays mostly because I had my work schedule and everything. It just uh, it was a little crazy the last couple of weeks. But I've got, I, I was able to get them out this past week. So just to let you know. All right. So uh, I think that's got it for the toast, uh, not the toast, excuse me, the tasting. <laughs> now let's get to the toasting. So we can do the national days because I'm looking forward to that. And let me set up for the national days here. National Days are online, and maybe we can do some dad jokes, too, if you got some dad jokes. Anyone else who wants to pop in with some dad jokes, feel free to do that. And uh, National Days are ready to go. Let me pull up my National Days here. And this is courtesy, by the way, of NationalDayCalendar.com. NationalDayCalendar.com, as Marlo Anderson saw, he's the CEO of National Day. Calendar.com. They uh, do a podcast regularly, and they're actually doing a promotion right now. Uh, check out their website at nationaldaycalendar.com. They're doing a promotion where I think they're giving away um, some kind of a Vegas, uh, uh, I don't know, some kind of Vegas thing going on. But anyway, um, uh, check it out. Uh, you, you could win. You never know. Give it a, give it a shot. All right, so June 17th, which is, uh, by the way, they don't pay me to say that, okay? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just doing that as a, because I like nationaldaycalendar.com, and uh, I like Marlo, and uh, he's a good guy. And he's put together a really good site where he's curated all of these national days. So uh, June 17th, which is, uh, well, it's today for another one hour and uh, nine minutes. By how time flies. Uh, June 17th is, uh, you, you're not going to believe this. 
<laughs> I did not know that there was one for this. I've been doing the National Days for years. I did not know there was a day for this. So Saturday, June 17, 2023 is Global Garbage Man Day. Yes, it is Global Garbage Man Day today, and I don't have any clever thing for set up for that uh, today. <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't know what what to do. <laughs> I could have gotten pictures of garbage, but I you know. Uh, anyway, it's Global Garbage Man Day, and you know what? Being a garbage man, they make some decent money. I, I hear some of these these guys make some decent money uh, for uh, for picking up garbage, and it's a it's a hard job. It's a hard job, and it can be a rather dangerous job too. So here's to Global Garbage Man Day. I'll drink to that. It's also it's also World Day to combat. Uh, desertification and drought. Today is uh, World Day to Combat des uh, desert desert Desertification and Drought. Not desertification, it's desertification and drought. I'm not sure how to even pronounce that. De desertification and drought. This has to do with um, uh, sort of trying to um, get rid of deserts. And, and and drought so uh, that's uh, we've got a world day to combat that to combat drought and and uh, uh, areas that are becoming deserts I think that's what that's about anyway um, I'll drink to that it's also world croc day June 17th is world croc day now we're not talking about the crocs that go on your feet we're talking about Crocodiles, as I understand it. World Croc Day. And it's also World Juggling Day. June 17th is World Juggling Day. I thought at first that I might try juggling and maybe juggling. A, hey, wait a minute. Let's try that. For World Juggling Day, I could always try. Oh, that's not. That's my kazoo. I haven't played that in a while. Uh, <laughs> I could try that sometime. All right, World Juggling Day. Um, I could try juggling these. Uh, never mind. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm already making a fool of myself. All right. <laughs> Just doing this. Yeah, let's... Uh, okay, I'll drink to World uh, Juggling Day. And you know what? I need to take this hat off. There you go. It's uh, also National Apple Strudel Day. Today is National Apple Strudel Day. And uh, I was asking Chia, I said, well, can we have some apple strudel? And she says, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not up to making apple strudel because it takes a long time to make. So I said, okay, here's the National Apple Strudel Day. And it's also National Cherry Tart Day. Do you like cherry tarts? Some people don't like cherry tarts. I happen to love cherry tart. And uh, in honor of National Cherry Tart Day, my wife purchased a bag of cherries. <laughs> no, she did not. She did not. She did not uh, make me a cherry shot. Uh, cherry, a cherry, cherry, you know, I didn't get it. A cherry tart. I'm trying to read these buttons and talk at the same time. That's what I get. Uh, no, she did not make me a cherry tart. Oh, great. Unfortunately. But she did buy a bag of cherries, which I love. And uh, they're, I guess they're just going into season, so she's... Um, she's... <laughs> So thank you to my lovely wife, Chi, for buying me the cherries for a National Cherry Tart Day. I'll drink to that. Okay, it's also, uh, we've got a couple more days here to toast. We're, we're going to be toasting for a while here. Everybody have a drink? Let's do some toasting. Do some more toasting. Okay, it's also, today is... Uh, also, what do I skip here? I got the World Juggling Day. I got the Apple Strudel. The uh, okay, it's um, National Eat Your Vegetables Day. 
Today is National Eat Your Vegetables Day. Uh, yeah, I know. It's National Eat Your Vegetables Day. It's not that bad. Come on. Uh, ve vegetables are good for you. Now, when you were a kid, that's what you were thinking. You know, oh, man, the vegetables. But vegetables are good for you. And I've grown up to really enjoy certain vegetables. Now, in honor of National Vegetable Day, this is what my lovely wife prepared. And it was right there. Now, what that is, and I have a picture of it because I took it just before the show, which is why I was a little late in getting the show started, is because... I had to take this photo. That is a uh, head-on shot of, because you're looking at it from overhead, you couldn't really tell what was going on, but this is the actual shot of what she made, and she did a fantastic job on it. This is a vegetable garden. Yes, what you're looking at here is her rendition, this is her presentation for tonight, her rendition of a vegetable garden. And for those of you who can't see it because you're listening to the podcast later, that's why I I, uh, that's why I'm giving an, an actual a description of this. We have in this vegetable garden, it's in, it looks like it's in an, an apple. Not really an apple, it's inside a tomato. That's what they actually is. This, this, it's all sitting in a tomato. That's supposed to be the, the pot, I guess, the, 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 the pot for the, uh, growing the vegetables. And you have in there, you have some, uh, looks like we have some carrots. We have some, I, it might be some pepper. Chief, maybe you can help me out with this. Uh, I see the asparagus. There's some asparagus sitting in, uh, 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 poking uh, up in the back end of it. We have a radish. Looks like we have a radish um, that's a flower of some sort. And a beautiful, beautiful uh, flower there, with the radish. We have some, uh, looks like we have some broccoli in there. Oh, we have a couple of pieces of asparagus. There are a couple of them, one on each side. And we have, uh, there's another piece of, there's another radish in the back there. Um, wow, we got a lot going on here. So uh, that's just an amazing presentation. And Chi, to my lovely wife, Chi, I want to give her a very big round of applause because she, she earned it. And I also want to give her I think she earned this too. I think she earned the the whole in one. Yes. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. That's a good one. I think that was a very good one, Chi. Thank you very, very much. She does a fabulous job with this, by the way. She, she does every week. All right. Uh, and so here's to National Eat Your Vegetables Day. I'll drink to that. Now, we have a couple more national days. I, I am saving the, the uh, one of them for last because that's going to segue into the next thing we're going to do. Before we get into uh, that, though, we have one more, I believe, here. Yes, today is. Today is National Mascot Day. Today is National Mascot uh, Just a second, Bill. Yeah, Bill, just a second. Today is National Mascot Day, and of course, uh, they're referring to mascots for, for sports teams and things like that, but we do have our very own, okay, Bill, we do have our very own mascot here who can't wait to come up here early and, and be a part. Okay, hold on a second. All right, here. Our mascot is, of course, Roadkill Bill. The inimitable, the chewed up, the wrecked up, the run over, the whatever, roadkill Bill. And he's got his message that he brings with him every episode of Drink With Rick on Saturday Night Wine Stream. We'll wait till the end of it for that. Okay, you, okay now? Okay, good. Back back there. Just wait till the end of the show. Anyway, here's to... Na okay, we'll drink to you. National Mascot dr uh, Day. Here's to National Mascot Day. I'll drink to that. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> National Mascot Day. Okay, now we have one. <laughs> Maybe I have had too much already. Wait, we're not even. I haven't even touched. I barely opened this bottle. Okay, 
14.5% alcohol by volume. I think I remember that part. So we have one more national day. Let me get back to the chats before we get to it. Um, all right. We're good everywhere. I think everybody bailed when I started talking to this stuffed animal. When I to started toasting a stuffed animal. It used to be a dog toy. Um, anyway, so uh, we've got one more national day to toast. Anybody guess what it is? Today is National Root Beer Day. Today is National Root Beer Day. Yes, it is. I will drink to that now. Because what we're going to do, what we're going to do on this show tonight, in honor of National Root Beer Day, we're going to, uh, well, we're, we're going to uh, open some root beer. So, uh, so let me get uh, to the root beer, and and of course, I've got the official drink with Rick ice bucket, and in the official drink with Rick ice bucket, I have some root beer. Not just any root beer. I have Virgil's root beer. This is from Trader Joe's, by the way. Virgil's root beer. So, we're going to open up some Virgil's Root Beer, and we're going to uh, toast National Root Beer Day with, what else? With some root beer. But we're not just going to make some root beer. No. It's not going to be just some root beer. We're going to make a root beer cocktail. This is a recipe that I found. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the other day, my son Tommy said he had some rum out and he says um and I had my root beer and he was making uh some coke a uh, rum and coke and I said well I, no, rum and coke I'm not real big on coke but uh, but I could could have some root beer and he says does anything go with root beer in terms of a of a, an alcoholic drink, beverage and I'm saying yes and I looked it up, but yes, for sure, for sure, there are drinks, there are uh, bar drinks that they use root beer for, several of them, but I'm going to make a simple one tonight. Tonight, I'm going to make, in honor of National Root Beer Day, we're going to make one with Virgil's Root Beer and some aged dark rum and... What do we have here? Oh, some Bailey's Irish Cream. A little bit of Bailey's Irish Cream. Now, here's the thing. When you're, this particular drink, this particular recipe calls for, uh, for spiced rum. The root beer, it, it actually goes best with spiced rum. Let me, uh, let me go to a close-up here. There we go. All right, so this goes best with spiced rum. Root beer does. We do not have any spiced rum, and the reason we don't have any spiced rum, and and, and actually, uh, my favorite spice uh, rum is Captain Morgan, and that and that's what they generally recommend. And to go with this root beer recipe, this particular recipe is to have the root beer and the spiced rum, or the Captain Morgan spice, spiced rum. But we don't have any Captain Morgan spiced rum because because we drank it all. So, no, seriously, we did. Because <laughs> I, I really like Captain Morgan Spice Rum. It's, it's, I like it. it. It's my favorite rum. So, uh, we don't have any. Uh, so, we're going to use this uh, Cruisin' Aged Dark Rum, which any rum will pretty much work, but it's, it's really best if we have the Spice Rum. So, what we do is we have... Now... Oftentimes the recipe calls for pouring in the root beer first. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pour in the rum first. So what you do is you you pour in, you get a shot of spiced rum, or in this case, we just got rum. We're going to uh, get a long shot of this. There we go. So we're going to put that in the in the glass. One shot of that. Whoop. <laughs> Oh, well, that's for later. Uh, it's just falling apart over here. 
Oh, okay. I don't want to lose my kazoo. Uh, now what was it going to do? Oh, yeah, so we're going to pour in the root beer into the glass. Get a nice little head on it. Okay, now I do, I'm not filling it all the way to the top. The reason I'm not doing that is because we have one more ingredient to add, and that is the Bailey's Irish Cream. Now I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this rum up here with the, with the root beer. I'm going to mix it up here real good. That'll get the head going, won't it? Yes, it sure will. It just did. All right, and then we're going to add a shot of, or half a shot. We can put, do half a shot. That's fine. And eh, what the heck? Let's put the whole thing in there. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to put in a shot of Bailey's Irish Cream. There we go. Very interesting. I could have just laid it on there at the top, but I didn't do that. So I'm just going to let it go in there. We got the Bailey's in there. It's looking pretty good. All right, now, now we can toast National Root Beer Day because what I have here is this root beer. Now, um, this is not a uh, what they call a, a, a pirate beer. There's a pirate beer, but it, it's made a little differently than this. But this is a, this is a recipe I pulled off the internet. But uh, I don't know if you're supposed to mix it up or not. Probably not. I don't know. It's not as messy as what we tried last week, which was the the root beer float. <laughs> but it's still, yeah, I, I was still cleaning up that mess from last week tonight before the show. <laughs> That's that was interesting. Anyway, so we've got this. Let me check the chats one more time. All right, we're good there. And uh, let's go ahead and try this. Let me toast. Let's go ahead and, and toast National Root Beer Day with a root beer with rum and Bailey's Irish Cream, which looks really, really interesting right now. Wow. Wow. This is really, really good. <laughs> I, I, because, okay, the vanilla-y kind of taste of the root beer mixed with the rum. I, I bet this is great with spiced rum. Yeah, I should, should have gotten some uh, more Captain Morgans before this. It all mixes together. I don't really taste the alcohol so much as I really taste a really strong vanilla flavor in this. And it's... Now, some people don't like vanilla. Some people do. I happen to like vanilla. But this is, uh, you know what it almost tastes like in a way? Hmm. It's almost like a very light butterbeer. Now, I mentioned the butterbeer last time. Is that, you know, from the Harry Potter series. And almost like a butterscotch beer. Because it's basically what butterbeer is. But it's... This kind of tastes a little bit like a butterscotch uh, soda or a butterscotch beer. Very interesting. Wow. Whoa, I like this. Whoa, yo ho ho. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I really like this. Is really good. I'm, um, I've never tried this before. I've never tried this recipe before, but I really like it. So let me say, um, I'm probably done with the wine tonight. Whoa, uh, I'll, I'll have to say, this is probably gonna bite me later. Oh, probably gonna bite me back uh, big time later. But uh, I, I don't mean in terms of my stomach, because uh, you know, it's just, <laughs> I, I don't drink a lot of soda, to be honest. I really don't drink a lot of soda, but this is really good. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Here is to National Root Beer Day. I will drink to that. Mm. Wow. And Virgil's, wow. Virgil's root beer is great. 
Wow, excellent. Excellent. Great stuff. All right. Uh, wow. Uh, very good. If you haven't tried it, try that recipe, okay? <laughs> I think you'll really enjoy that. By the way, June 8th, there are a few uh, national days for June 18th. Uh, maybe we should try a few of those uh, real quick. I don't know if I can go back to the wine now. I, I will. I think uh, having this and then going back to the wine is probably going to mess me up a little bit. Mm. Okay, well, we can toast with the beer then. Here, so June 18th is... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, uh, June 18th is International Sushi Day. Let me toast that. International Sushi Day. It's also National Wanna Get Away Day. And it's National Go Fishing Day. And it's National Splurge Day. That's, uh, that's uh, for Sunday, June 18th. And uh, it's also National Turkey Lovers Day. If you like turkey as I do, I love turkey. National Turkey Lovers Day. The third Sunday in June is National Turkey Lovers Day. It's also it's also an International Panic Day. Did you know that it is International Panic Day in about another 46 minutes, 48 minutes? Something tells me I'm going to be... Oh, man. I, I Here's to all those national days. <laughs> i got a little light on that. And of course, it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's one. There, yeah, there's another day that, that June 18th uh, commemorates. Saving it for last. It's World Sustainable Gastronomy Day. It's World Sustainable Gastronomy Day. <sighs> I'll drink to that. Something tells me my gastrointestinal system is going to <clears throat> be talking to me later all right uh all right okay it really it really is world sustainable gastronomy day um june 18th but yes that that's not the national day i was referring to it's father's day um june 18th is father's day and for those of us who had fathers or have fathers we're going to be fathers uh, we're fathers now. Uh, here is to you. To th this is for Father's Day to all the fathers everywhere. Here's to you. Happy, happy Father's Day. And I'm toasting with the root beer, which is fine. But uh, here's to uh, here, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Okay, I think that'll do it for the National Days. <laughs> I think, once again, this is the wine that we were drinking, the Vinha de Fonte Reserva. It's a wine from Portugal. I think considering the fact that I went right into the root beer, um, I think I'm going to uh, retire the wine for the night because I, I, I don't want to... I'm switching back and forth between the root beer and the, wine, the soda and all that kind of stuff, the rum and all that. Uh, I I have a feeling that's that's gonna that's yeah that's not gonna be good for me uh, in the morning. So uh, <clears throat> a man's got to know his limitations, doesn't he? This root beer is pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay. Um, think about what'll happen in the morning. Okay. <laughs> I've got to be able to get up for Father's Day, right? <laughs> okay, um, yeah, because I do have some things I have to do tomorrow. A lot of things to have to do. And I don't want to cover it right now, but I, I will say that um, tomorrow's going to be a pretty pretty busy day, um, uh, particularly for my son Tom Antio and me. Uh, it's going to be a very busy day. And Tom Antio is in the chat on Twitch. Speaking of which, Tom Antio... He is there, and Tom Antio, it's great to see you. By the way, here's a toast at, oh, 
whatever. <laughs> Here's a toast to Tom Antio with the root beer and rum. Oh man, I am gonna feel that in the morning. Anyway, uh, that's good stuff. It's really good stuff. But wow, uh, yeah, it could probably it could probably mess you up. You drink a whole lot of it. At least it will for me. A little bit sips. I think that's the way to do it. So anyway, Tommy Antio, it's great to see you, by the way. And um, I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being here, Tommy Antio. <laughs> uh, okay, you get more than that. You you get the yeah you you get the. Um, I've got so many buttons here, I don't even know what I'm doing with them anymore. So, um, I think it's time for, I think it's time for more cowbell, don't you think? More cowbell. Great to see you, Tom Antio. And yes, we have a big day tomorrow because we're going to be um, we're going to be cleaning out the garage. <laughs> but we're doing it for a specific reason, and I can't go into the details right now. But we're we're going to be setting up some more studio space in the garage for some things we're going to be doing. Some exciting things, some of which I hope we'll be showing on this show here coming up in the next uh, few weeks and months ahead. At this point, I do want to make a mention of, uh, real quick, the uh, 100 TV. 100 TV is uh, starting to, to take root here a little bit. Now, for those of you who don't know what 100 TV is, it is a network on YouTube. Ooh. Excuse me, this uh, rope beer, wow. Uh, 100 TV network has uh, uh, a, a bunch of creators, um, oh, I don't know, 18 creators or so, they've gotten together, put together a collection of shows. They had been streaming them, but they are um, they're at now um, setting up on the network individually, being posted individually on the 100 TV network, so you can watch those. Um, my The sixth episode of the Drink With Herc Rewind just went up, uh, Thursday night, and it's it's had some pretty good reviews on it so far. So uh, I'm um, I'm looking forward to doing more of these episodes. Uh, I do have a promo if nobody's seen the promo yet. Uh, you know, I've got a promo here. I can I can run real quick. Here's the promo for uh, the Drink with Rick Rewind on 100 TV. I don't script any of this. This is a stream of consciousness kind of program. <laughs> We're going to find out if this is a wine worth drinking or not. Oh, this could go either way. I'm going to go in with an open mind and an open bottle, and we'll try it out, see how good it is if, or if it's any good at all. This is a completely unstructured show, and it's just something fun I'm doing. It has a very nice finish to it, I will say that. And that's the promo for the Drink With Rick Rewind on 100 TV. Um, it's, it looks like it's starting to take off a little bit, so we'll see what happens uh, moving forward. But I have some other things because the, the streaming bug has really bit me now and the network, concept of network has really bit me. You know, of course, that we do have a network, Savoya Media Network. We do have a network of podcasts, and that's been on the... Uh, we've had this for a couple of years, and uh, let's see, I can show you the, the there we go, the, the front page of the, for the Savoya Media Network, but this is, uh, where is it here? Okay, here's the webpage uh, for the Savoya Media Network, and we have a number of, of different shows that run, including um, the uh, Cube Command Podcast, Drink with Rick, and then some of our legacy shows. We have a whole bunch of legacy shows over the last... By the way, I, I want to give a shout out to, to my son, Tom Antio, uh, who actually this month... And I need to do that now. I need to do that right now. 
let's jump back here. Stop the show for a second. Stop the show. All right. Um, I want to give a shout out to my son, Tom Antio, for just a moment. Let's switch to the wine for a second. Let's see if that works. Uh, who just uh, this month celebrated his uh, 13th anniversary as a podcaster. Here's to my son, Tom Antio. Tom, uh, for your 13th anniversary as a podcaster, congratulations. And as a matter of fact, um, next week is my 17th anniversary as a podcaster, my official 17th anniversary. So um, we'll toast that next week. <laughs> I'm not going to toast that now. Anyway, congratulations, Tom Antio. Thank you very much for your contributions to podcasting. And uh, he, he has done quite quite well in that space over the years. By the way, his first his first podcast was he started off with uh, a podcast. The first show was one called Tia and Tommy, the Tia and Tommy show. Let me see if we can pull that up here for just a second. The Tia and Tommy show. With uh, with Tommy and his sister Tia, all the episodes are still available. You can listen to them at so if you go to SavoyMedia.com, you can hear Tommy when he was just uh, just really really young. I don't know if you can hear it through here. Let me see if it plays. Um, I don't know if it. You can hear it it's Hi, the yes, Tia yeah. and Tommy show with Tia and Tommy. And now, here are your hosts, Tia and Tommy. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Tia and Tommy Show. I'm Tia. And I'm Tommy. Today, we're going to be talking about mice. Yes, that's right, mice. Well... Okay, well that was the Tia and Tommy Show. That was a little clip from it. <laughs> But that was uh, that, that was uh, Tia and Tommy, and the, and yes, his anniversary was June seventh. That's when the show launched was June seventh in two thousand ten. So and once again, Tommy, congratulations. Congratulations. Anyway, <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> That's. <laughs> Jumped in the chat and you weren't expecting that. <laughs> so, um, Rhonda is in the chat. Wow. Uh, Rhonda, I hope you're still there because I missed you in the chat earlier. I was so busy with this root beer thing, I forgot. But Rhonda says, I joined late. What's in it? Rhonda, it is great to see you. And I want to give a shout out to Rhonda, my good friend Rhonda Poe. And uh, I want to give you some applause too. Anyway, thank you for being here on the show. Rhonda, you say you joined late. What's in it? Uh, what's in this root beer um, is, uh, it's root beer, Virgil's root beer, root beer, and rum. Now, it's supposed to be a spiced rum, like Captain Morgan's spiced rum. But uh, we ran out of Captain Morgan Spice Rum because we, we drank it earlier. <laughs> so uh, I don't have any more of that. So we, we went with the Cruisin' Aged Dark Rum. And then what I put in there, I, I put in a shot of the, uh, the rum. I put in uh, pretty much a bottle of the Virgil's Root Beer. And then a shot of Bailey's Irish Cream. So what we had here was... Um, it's uh, I, I wouldn't call it a, a pirate uh, beer, but it, it's it's pretty close to it. Very good. This is really really good. Um, I recommend you tr give it a try if you like root beer, if you like root beer, if you like rum, if you like ba Bailey's Irish Cream. I think you'll love this combination. But I, I, I'm warning you, you'll have to be careful because. Um, uh, wow, well, uh, you know, if you can take it, that's fine. But for me, uh, it might because uh, I had the wine and I had the the other things that we were that we were. Um, if you go here to camera three, the the other things that we 
paired up with the wine tonight. Oh wow, um, this uh, this might not sit too well with me overnight or in the morning, but and I mean just gastronomically speaking, I'm not talking about it, I'm just saying gastronomically. It it might be uh, I might have overdone it tonight on, in in that respect because you mix too many things up like that, especially with carbonated beverages. You, Sometimes you just never know what the outcome's gonna be <laughs> until <laughs> until the outcome. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, Ed says I had a hard root beer float on Thursday, made with not your father's root beer, a brand that has booze. Yeah, uh, I have. Um, not your father's root beer is. Yeah, it, yeah, that has booze. <laughs> Not your father's root beer is is good stuff, and um, I, but I have to I have to admit it's with root beer it's kind of for me and and actually for my wife for my wife she we're kind of particular in the kind of root beer that we like to drink, and there are some root beers that I didn't really care for too much. I and I remember you know back in the day A and W root beer was the big thing, and then there were a few others that were. That were really big that a lot of people liked that were very popular at some point along the line i sort of fell out of uh, i sort of fell out of love with the a and w and um, i started liking a couple of other root beers that were really really i wouldn't say exotic but they were really different they were uh, maybe uh, sort of uh, cra I wouldn't say or craft root beers, but they kind of were because they were made by by a couple of local uh, uh, makers. And um, one, of course, was um, I think it was. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. It was a long time ago. I don't really don't recall the name of it now, but there were a couple that I thought were really really good. Now. One of the root beers that I like, and one that's that's a favorite of cheese, is Saranac. And Saranac makes, you know, they make some beers, but they also make a lot of different sodas. And you can pick those up at, it sounds like commercial, doesn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> Nobody pays me for anything around here. <laughs> not for this show. Uh, but uh, Saranac makes some great sodas, and Saranac is sold by Total Wine. Total Wine uh, sells the Saranac wine uh, line. Yeah, um, and anyway, so uh, Saranac makes they make a really nice. They make a, make an orange. They make a, a what else? Do they make they make a Shirley Temple kind of that was kind of popular uh, with my kids. My kids loved the Shirley Temple one. It was kind of a tutti frutti, you know, kind of a bubblegum flavor, and. Uh, then the root beer, and they had a couple of others. They had, a, I think, they've got a vanilla soda, I think, and a couple of others. But the root beer was really, really good. And my wife still buys the root beer. She loves the Saranac uh, root beer. And Virgil's, Virgil's is one. I, I think this is, a, I think this is the Trader Joe's one, isn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, Virgil's is really, really good. I like Virgil's root beer. And uh, this I think mixes really really well with the rum. Well, once again, I think that it would be better if you used the spice rum, the, or in particular the Captain Morgan spice rum. Captain Morgan's, yeah. I'm, no, I'm not a shill for Captain Morgan's either. Okay, I just like the rum, but it's it's actually very good, and I think with the spiced rum mixed with the root beer, um, I think that would make a a perfect combination and then you throw in the Bailey's Irish cream to give it a, a little bit of a, a a little bit of a twist on that and I think you've got a real winner I really enjoy this beer this root beer cocktail so Rhonda I would look I tell you what Rhonda uh, if you're interested in doing trying this out please try this out and then tell me what you think and everybody else too Ed um, tell don't take my word for it. Try it out yourself and tell me what you think. And, and you can send me the feedback, too, at uh, RicketSavoyMedia.com. RicketSavoyMedia.com. Tell me what you think. And if you liked it or if you didn't like it, or what you thought of it, or if you have a better idea for um, 
for the combination for this or a better idea for the the brand of root beer to use um i'd love to hear it and we can give it a try we can give it a shot here right on the show mix it up and because it's it's very simple to make uh, so definitely you know try it out and tell me what you think of it so anyway um and Rhonda, i tell you what i think you're the big winner tonight um i'll tell you what i'll do uh, because I'm so happy to see you here, my friend, and it's been a long time. Um, Ron and I worked together at WFL years ago. Really, really nice person. And, um, you know, I tell you what, uh, Ron, if, if you go ahead and, I've got it up here already, just uh, send me a shipping address, a valid shipping address at ricksafoyamedia.com. I will send you, you're the winner tonight of the official Drink with Rick wine tasting notebook. I'll send you one for free, okay? I'll send you the official Drink with Rick wine tasting notebook. And this is where you have all the tasting notes and everything like that for, for uh, tasting wines. And I, it sells for on Amazon for $8.99, but I'll send you one for free. Just go ahead and send your um, uh, just a valid shipping address to rick at savoymedia.com after the show. And I'll get one out right to you. And in fact, I will throw in a pair of the Drink with Rick coasters as well. Because I've got those here as well. I'll throw in a pair of those along with the book. So just uh, send that in and, and I'll get them right to you. Anyway, uh, Rhonda says, thank you. Well, you're, you're quite welcome. And it's great to see you here. I'm honored to have you here. By the way, I'm honored to have everybody here. Uh, it's just uh, doing the show for five. We're now in our fifth year. And doing the show and having everybody come in and, and talk with them. Yeah, we're not... It's, you know, I'm streaming on different platforms. We're not, I'm not huge on any of them per se, but but every everybody who gets in the chat and talk with me and we have great conversations and we talk about stuff, we do stuff, we have some fun, we show some films, we, you know, we just have a good time. That's what's important to me. And, and as I said last week on the show when I was talking about the whole Twitch thing, I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm not looking for 100,000 viewers. I'm looking for uh, just to connect with everyone who connects with me here, just just to have a good time. I'm doing the show for fun. It's, all, it's what it's all about, just having a good time. No pressure on any of that. So um, I'm just happy you're here and uh, with me, and uh, that's, that's what matters. That's the important thing. So... Anyway, um, I think it's just about time to close up the show for tonight, but I want to... Uh, I, did I miss anything? I don't think I missed anything, did I? Okay, we're going to give a final review. We, got, we were going to tell some dad jokes, if anybody has some dad jokes. We can always tell a few of those. Um, I got a couple of chicken jokes. <laughs> I always have a couple of chicken jokes. Uh, let's see. Let me hear a couple of them. Uh, Oh no! I used to that one already. And some of these I have to I have to sort through. All right, what's a chicken's favorite school subject? Egonomics. Yes, egonomics. Wait, late on the rim shot. See, I that's why I need a producer. Late, too late on the rim shot. Uh, what do chickens order for dessert? Coop cakes. I don't have a response for that one. <laughs> um, what do pessimistic roosters say? Cock a doodle don't. Um, how do chickens leave the motorway? They take the exit. Exit. Yeah, okay, whatever. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. <laughs> Where's the best place to find out about chickens? In an encyclopedia. No. Okay, yeah, I know. That, that was... Uh... <laughs> All right, I know everybody's going to leave now. <laughs> That's enough. Okay, well, we'll go easy on the jokes. Unless somebody else has one. Unless someone has a dad joke they want to drop in there, that's fine. Um, 
Anyway, I think that's uh, that's it for tonight. I don't want to overstay my welcome. Anyway, uh, final review on the wine. So this is what we we're drinking tonight. We were drinking the Vinha de Fonte, which actually had a very small font A on the back, so it was kind of hard to read some of it because the Fonte was so small. But uh, I'm reading the back of it. 25% Cabernet, 25% uh, Castileo, 20% Syrah, 20% Turiga National. Uh, Torrigo National, I can't even read this thing anymore, it's so small. And 10% Alicante Boucher. Uh, so we have quite a mix, quite a blend of wines in here. It actually went fairly well with uh, the spaghetti, the paschetti, the, um, and, and it went really well with the uh, unexpected cheddar with parm. I didn't like it as much with the Grana Padano cheese over there. I wonder if that cheese is getting a little bit old. Uh, but it, it went well with, with most everything else. It uh, has some medium tannin in it. It's uh, a fairly bold wine. Not not super bold, but fairly bold. But it is kind of a purplish color, so it looks, it looks bolder than it is. That's the interesting thing here. It looks a lot bolder than it is because this looks like a very bold wine, but it's it's not quite as bold. It's somewhat a medium acidity, and it's um, blackberry, cherry. I, I taste more cherry than blackberry. It's opened up a little bit more. Let me get a little taste here. Still a little bit um, jammy, and um, it seems like the some of the cherry is given away to more blackberry. Some black fruit in here, uh, absolutely. But it's also a little bit, just a little bit oaky. And it said that it was, uh, I think it was stored in French and American oak barrels. It was aged in American uh, oak barrels and French oak barrels mix. Um, I can't really tell the difference on this at this point. It's just it is a little oaky. I will say that. So uh, that's my final review on the... Uh, I do recommend it. Here's the thing, though. Look at this. It has a deep punt in it. And it did say on the back of the wine, it did say store for a recommended maximum of 10 years. So this was not a wine that was made to just be consumed right away. It was made to be stored and, and then saved for a little while and then consumed. That's my kind of wine, but let me tell you something. $8.99 at Trader Joe's. Um, this is a wine I think that I will buy another bottle or two and uh, save it for a while. See how it goes. 14.5% alcohol by volume, by the way. So it's a little high on the alcohol content, but I, I'm not really getting the, too much of an alcohol taste in it because I don't like... I don't like it when the uh, when it's so strong that the alcohol taste kind of overpowers the the taste of the wine, all the little um, nuance of flavor. So um, I prefer wines that are like twelve and a half to thirteen and a half percent because I can really really taste the wine more than the alcohol. So there are some wines that just the alcohol just overpowers it, and I think they've kind of Americanized it. Um, more or less because some some folks in this country do like that alcohol flavor in the wine. I'm not one of those who do. I, it, it, I like to enjoy the wine for what it is and let it really blend in and mix in with the foods that I'm going to eat that are going to pair well with it. So uh, a little bit of alcohol, okay, but uh, I, I like to I like to taste the the cherries and the blackberries and you know whatever else is in the wine. Um, that's that's what I like. So Ed has a couple of, before we close up here, Ed has a couple of dad jokes. Ed says, why did the elephant sit on the marshmallow? He didn't want to fall into the hot chocolate. No, no. <laughs> I'll give you some applause on that, why not? I'll give you applause on that one, Ed. That's good. 
I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you. It was actually pretty good. Ed says, what's worse than raining cats and dogs? Okay, what is worse than raining cats and dogs? Hailing taxi cabs. All right, I give you that was that was that was pretty good. Hailing taxi cabs. You got to think about that one for a second. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I like that one. Thank you, Ed. That was a good one. Why did the elephant sit on the marshmallow? He didn't want to fall into the hot. <laughs> It gets funnier the second time you read it. It's, it's, it's a dumb joke, but it gets funnier the second time you read it. Uh, okay, uh, that that was good. That was good. Um, I will I will give you the I will give you the long. I'll give you the laugh. I'll give you the long laugh. How about that? Whoops, that's not what I wanted here. I'm just pressing buttons now. Where's where's my long laugh? Uh, here's my long laugh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that, that laugh is getting longer every second. How do I turn this thing off? <laughs> All right, that was good, Ed. Thank you. I appreciate that, my friend. So, uh, yeah, I think it's time to close it up, don't you? <laughs> uh, Tom Antio looks like he's freaking out over there with his emoticon. All right, well, thank everyone for being here tonight. Uh, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. You have no idea just just what that means to me that, that, that you're here with me on a Saturday night. And I'm not drinking alone. Nobody likes to drink alone. But I'm glad you're here. And I want to thank my good friend Ed for being here tonight. And my good friend Rhonda, thank you for being here tonight. It's great to see you. Uh, and every time every time you're here, every time you know you check in, whatever, it's, it's always great to see you each and every one of you here, and Tom Antio, and all those who are watching. We have folks watching on Twitch, but uh, they're not jumping into the chat. And look, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to jump into the chat if you don't want to. Uh, we have folks watching everywhere else, and I can, I can see some of you out there, but um, and, and it's all good. As long as you're watching, you're having a good time. That That's the important thing, right? All right, well, we... I am going to bring him back out again because it is National Mascot Day. And, of course, it is that time of the evening for the show to bring him out. And we have none other than my good friend and mascot, Roadkill Bill. And he has a special message for each and every one of you. Right, Bill? You only haven't been on camera two yet for a while. Hey, we haven't been on camera two the whole show. Look at that. Yeah, you're on camera too. How about that? What do you think? Yeah, okay. All right, and uh, Bill has a special message for all of us. What's that message, Bill? By the way, happy International, International Mascot Day. Can't believe I'm toasting a former dog toy. Anyway, Bill has a special message for us, and that message is a very serious one. I know I'm messing around here, but this is a serious message. Please do not drink and drive. Drink in the comfort of your home, your office, your apartment, your hotel room, wherever you are, your dwelling, wherever it is. Don't drink and drive. If you have to go somewhere, if you absolutely have to go somewhere, call an Uber, call a Lyft, call a cab, call a friend, a friend who has not been drinking and a friend you trust who you can get the keys to and let them drive. Otherwise, just stay put because it's not worth it. You don't want to put yourself at risk. You don't want to put any uh, anyone else at risk. Just don't drink and drive. I know I'm speaking to the choir here. Everyone here who watches this show is smart, and most of you are probably smarter than me, and I know you're not going to do this. But this is a public service message that, uh, the, and a disclaimer that I, I, that I give out every week. I do do this because I care about you. I really do care about you. And I care about all those others around you. And, and, 
it's it's not worth it. I've seen I've had friends. I don't want to go into this now, but I've I've had friends and loved ones who have uh, suffered because of drunk driving. So I implore you, please do not drink and drive. Don't text and drive either because that's also extremely dangerous. Because I want you to have a great week. But most of all, I want you to have a safe week. So you can join me here again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night. Thank you.